Today we're going to cover all the essential Unity tools I bring into every single project, and we're going to write the scripts that import them all automatically. The idea here is that you'll be able to take what we build here in the video today and really make it your own for your own workflow. So I'm going to keep the intro short. I want to be able to show you guys all the assets that I really love and use all the time and show you how I get them in with just a couple clicks. I think we'll structure today's video by first setting out an outline of what this project setup suite is going to do. We're going to want it to be able to handle importing assets. We're going to want to be able to import custom packages and packages from the com.unity namespace. And we're going to want to be able to create and manipulate folders and assets in the project. So today we're going to fill out all three of these sections. And in between each, I'm going to talk about my favorite editor tools that I bring into every project. So why don't we have a look at some of those right now? It goes without saying that I put Serenex tools into every project, starting with Odin Inspector and Serializer. Odin allows you to serialize just about anything, including polymorphic types, and it helps you rapidly create custom editor inspectors and windows. For me, this tool is a no brainer, but be aware that if your project has received more than 200K in funding, you do need an enterprise license. They've also recently released Odin Validator, which is an amazing tool that will bulk fix issues in your project and also adds a whole bunch of validation features so that you can get helpful messages in the inspector and keep everything on track. So I put both of those tools into every project and I'm also looking forward to this new tool that they've been building called PanGUI. And if you're interested in something that's going to be, well, likely going to be better than UGUI and UI Toolkit, come over to the PanGUI website and sign up for the beta. I think a lot of us are really looking forward to what they're gonna make next year. It's gonna be a game changer. So I've long been a fan of DoTween, but in recent months I've been trying PrimeTween and that came out of some discussions on Discord. So thanks to the community for pointing this asset out. This is a non-allocating tween library and it's so easy to use. I just can't even believe it. You can make amazing animations in just one line of code, or you can chain them together to make more complex animations. And maybe best of all, this is an open source tool. So all the code is available on GitHub. Since this is a free tool, I highly recommend picking it up and trying it out. Importing assets into your project is super easy. All you really have to do is kick off a job to bring in the package. Let's encapsulate this into a method. We'll call it import asset. This needs the full name of the Unity package and the folder where Unity has stored this package after you've downloaded it from the asset store. Now we can figure out where all of these assets are being stored on your local device by using the get folder path method. And from there, we can derive where Unity is storing all the store assets. So if we combine those two paths together, we should get something that looks a little bit like this. Now we know where Unity is storing all of your assets. We can use the asset database .import package by combining all three of these together. Now we don't really need these grayed out qualifiers, so I'm just gonna quickly remove those. Okay, that's really it. All we have to do now is create a method we can use from the main menu. I'm gonna put this one under tools, setup, We'll just call it import essentials. And all we have to do is kick off these jobs. Unity will handle everything else asynchronously for you. Just start the job and let it run. But you do have to make sure that the file name and the subfolder that it's under are correct. Now, sometimes asset store creators like to make really long or confusing names. It's important once you've downloaded the asset that you want to be bringing in this way, go and figure out exactly what the correct subfolder name is and the actual name of the Unity package. And that's it, really. This is how I get all the fundamental assets that I like to have in every single project in, just with one click of a button. So why don't we go take a look at a few more of those assets right now. Editor Console Pro is probably the tool I get asked about the most because I've been using it for so long, you probably see it in every single video. Now this is a very, very powerful extension to the normal console. The thing I like most about it is that I can see the stack right here in the console. So whenever something goes wrong or wherever I have a breakpoint, I can see exactly what happened leading up to there without having to do any further investigation. It has a lot of other features too that I just can't, it would take a whole video to go over them all. It's a very powerful tool, highly recommended. Now you know that I love chronic products, but the one that I put into every single project right from the start is Color Studio. And that's because I'm not very good with colors. And if I want my UI to match up with elements inside of my game, I turn to this tool all the time. So I just pop it open here and dock it, and then I can set up my own palette based on colors inside of my game. 
and just spin the wheel around and it'll set up all kinds of combinations for you. You can set up your own palettes. This tool lets you change the colors of game objects inside of your game. There's also an editor that lets you change sprites and textures right inside of Unity. It's amazing. I suggest grabbing this one if you struggle with colors the same way I do. Okay, this next one here, I honestly, I don't know why this isn't part of Unity. I don't get it. But full screen editor is another tool I can't live without. This tool lets you quickly grab any one of the normal tabs that you have and blow it up to full size. So I use it most for scene view. So that key code is F11. You can quickly blow up your scene view to be full screen and suddenly you can start doing exactly what you do in scene view except you're doing it here in full screen. And if you have a massive ultra wide screen, let me tell you, it is awesome for level building. So this is a must have tool, I think. Okay, next is a free tool from Staggart, which is called Selection History. I use this one in so many videos too, but you can see I've just docked it here right beside my console. And anytime I click on something in the hierarchy, of course it gets added in there so that I can quickly find it again later. And if I click on something in the selection history, it'll ping it over where it came from. And as you can see, it works for things in the project window as well. So this favorites window tool I actually picked up because I was starting to build my own favorites window and it occurred to me that somebody's probably already built a favorites window that has all the features that I want. And sure enough, this one does have all those features. So not only can this one bookmark all your favorites as you're going through them and you know you want to get back to it later for some reason, you can organize them as well by a particular workspace. So you can organize them by scene if you want and so on. Oh, one of my favorite Unity YouTube channels is Warped Imagination, but what you guys might not know is that there are three Warped Imagination tools you can get on the Asset Store. Now, I put all three of these into every project, but my favorite one is this audio previewer. All you have to do to hear a sound in the editor is just double click. So importing custom packages in Unity packages is a little bit different than assets from the store. And that's because custom packages can often have dependencies, so they just have to be brought in one by one. When you wanna bring in a package, you make an add request. Now we can drop the qualifier here and make this nice and concise. To facilitate bringing them in one by one, let's make a queue of all the package names. So let's have a public method here that'll install all the packages we want. We'll just pass the names in as an array of strings. To start with, let's get them all into the queue. We can just use a for each loop for each name. We're just going to enqueue them into the packages to install queue. When we're done that, as long as there's more than one in there, we'll make a separate asynchronous method to handle this. Here we can start leveraging the unity editor.packages library. In there, there's a class called client and it has a method called add, and this is for adding a request. So we'll just pass in the first name that we pop out of our queue. So this kicks off the install of the package and then we can wait. So while the request is not complete, we'll just wait for 10 millis, then we'll check it again. Once we come out of this while loop, let's say if we've had a success, let's say that we've installed the package. If we come out with some other status code that's greater or equal to the failure status code, let's put that error message out into the console. If there's more packages in the queue, let's just wait for one second, make sure Unity's done any sort of background operations, and then we'll kick off the next job. Okay, let's make a menu item so that we can install some packages that we want. Let's come up to the top here. Let's have a new method, install packages. Let's give it a meaningful name up in the menu. Let's call it install essential packages. Good enough. Now for this to work, we just have to make an array of all the packages that we want to import. So that would be, for example, com.unity.2d.animation. This will work great for custom packages too. For example, if we want to bring in the Unity Utility Library or we want to bring in the Improved Timers Library from GitHub, it's just as simple as doing this. Then all we have to do is use that install packages method that we made, pass in the array. Now we might as well inline this variable to make this a little more concise. And I'll just mention one more thing. The new Unity input system requires a Unity editor restart. So if you're going to be importing that, make it the last thing in the list. That way you import all of your other packages, then that one that requires the restart, restart your editor and you're all done. Okay, that's all you have to do to install packages and custom packages. Let's go back and look at some more assets. This is one of my favorite assets because it's so clever and actually I like all the assets that this publisher makes. But this one here lets you rename components in the inspector. So that's not renaming the class or anything, it's just giving it a different label. So you can label your components whatever you want in the inspector and give them meaningful names. Why don't we just go take a look at it in the editor quickly. So here you can see I've got two box colliders on this particular game object. 
<laughs> that doesn't tell me very much by the glance, right? If I hit F2, it lets me put whatever name I want in here. So here I can say, this is the main collider. And uh, it can still tell me in brackets what type of collider it is, what the underlying object is. But I can give these things meaningful names. And now I'm not fumbling around trying to figure out, oh, what was this again? No, it's very clear to see. And you can do whatever you want. This is a little bit more customizable than I'll show here. But this is a very handy asset. This next one is a free asset. I think everybody should have it. It's self-explanatory, so I'm not really going to demo it. Yet another feature that I really don't understand why isn't part of the editor. Of course, you can write your own, but if you just want a free asset from the store that'll do it for you, this is the one that I use. I get asked a lot of questions about this one. Better transform. Why does my transform look so different? This is why I use Better Transform from Tiny Giant Studio. And this just has so many quality of life improvements. I don't even think I can iterate them all, but I'll try quickly. Essentially, this is a wrapper around the transform inspector and you get all kinds of additional features. Hands down, the thing I'm constantly using here is the copy paste reset beside each of the transforms properties. But there's a lot of other features here that you can make use of. Just being able to swap between global and local space with one click without having to go over to the silly menu. All of these things that eliminate you having to navigate menus all the time to do and you can just now do with one click. It's just another thing that should be in Unity by default. Anyway, I've been using this asset for a long time, but just recently Tiny Giant Studios came up with another one that I also like, and that is Better Mesh Filter. Now, this is a fantastic asset if you're constantly having to jump over to Blender to figure things out like what's wrong with my UVs or how many vertexes are in this model. And you can preview it right in the inspector. You know, I'm actually surprised how lightweight this asset is given how functional it is. I definitely recommend checking this one out if you like the Better Transform one. Another publisher I really like is CanGam, and they've got a great asset called Mouse Shortcuts and History. Now, essentially, the gist of this asset is it's going to give you a new window here called Mouse Button Shortcuts, and you're just linking up your shortcuts to buttons on your mouse. And the most common use of this, of course, is to bounce between your selections. So you were working on one item, you want to jump back to your previous selection, easy. Very, very easy to set up all kinds of shortcuts here. They've got them pre-configured. You just select what you want and off you go. CanGam has another great asset called UI Preview. Now this one's pretty self-explanatory. Instead of seeing all the properties of some UI prefab that you've made, it's actually going to show you what the UI prefab looks like. This is just one of those quality of life things you didn't know you were missing until you actually have it. Now, if you like these two assets that I just mentioned, CanGam does have a bundle with these two and several others all lumped together for a cheaper price on their asset store page. Something I've been using lately is custom icons in my hierarchy. And for that, there's a free asset on the store that you can download. You can also learn how to do this if you go over to the Warped Imagination YouTube channel. There's a whole video on how to put your own custom icons if you don't like these ones. But if you just want something simple and you want the different icons that you see in my videos sometimes, you can grab this asset for free. Okay, how about we finish up our setup suite with some folder creation, some file manipulation, and so on. So let's add some public methods here. First of all, we're gonna want to be able to create folders, and then we're gonna want to do that under some kind of root folder. We can pass in a list of folders here. First of all, let's determine the full path that we're looking for here. We'll just combine the application.data path with the root that we pass in. Then let's see if it exists or not. If it doesn't exist, then we need to actually create this folder. Now we've passed in a whole array of other folders that we want to put underneath this root. So let's iterate over all of them and we'll create them in a new method. Now we're going to pass in the full path and this string folder. The folder could have delimiters in it. So what I'm going to do here is just parse those out by splitting them into a new array. We'll set a default for the current path, which will be the path that we passed in. Let's just iterate over all the folders we've broken up out of that string. Let's combine the current path with our folder. Then let's check if it exists. If not, we create that folder. Okay, that part's simple. Let's add more functionality. What if we want to move one folder to reparent it to another one? Now, what I'm going to use this for is to move things out of my assets folder and into subfolders. So I'm going to say the source path is assets slash whatever this folder name is. And we can say if this is a valid folder in the project, let's create a destination path, which will be assets slash new parent slash the existing folder name. Then we can call the move asset method from the asset database class and capture an error if there is one. If there was a problem moving the folder, let's log that out to the console. Similarly, I might want to delete some of the default folders that come in with a Unity project. So let's make another public method here. We'll just call it delete. 
it just takes in a folder name. This is going to be very similar. Let's figure out the path to this actual thing that's under the assets folder. If it's a valid folder, all we need to do is call the delete asset method and we're done. Now, usually after any of these operations, you should also use the asset database.refresh method, but we can also do that up here when we're doing a sequence of operations. Let's make a menu item here, create folders. I'm going to pass in a list of all the default folders I want. The root will be underscore project, and then all these other params will be the folders that will go under it. Now, as soon as I've created some folders, we'll do an asset database.refresh. Now, after that, Unity has some default folders that I don't want sitting up in the root of my assets. So I'm going to move the scenes folder from the root down into my underscore project folder. I'm going to do the exact same thing with settings. Now, you never look at the tutorial info more than one time, so let's just delete that entire folder. And now that we've done a few operations, let's make sure that we refresh again. Now, there's just two other things that drive me crazy. Unity always puts the default input actions at the root level of the asset folder. Let's put that into our underscore project slash settings. We can use the asset database dot move asset method to do that. And I don't need this readme sitting there either. So let's just kill the readme asset using the delete asset method. And after those two operations, we should do another refresh. Now, throughout this entire file, we've got quite a few redundant qualifiers. I think we could do some cleanup here and just make this quite concise. I only left them in for the purpose of the video, really. So we can remove redundant qualifiers everywhere in this file. That'll do a major cleanup on everything. And then also, you know, while we're at it, we can get rid of a lot of things like this, you know, explicit use of string. We can use var everywhere in the file. You know, on top of that, since we have a full understanding of what a lot of these variables are doing now, we can actually just inline a lot of this stuff and make the whole thing quite a bit shorter. So I'll do a little bit of cleanup here. And before I put this up on GitHub as a gist, I think I'll do a little bit more of rearranging and whatnot, just so it's very easy to understand and read. And then you can take this script and make it, you know, whatever you want, make it your own, right? For me, I just have this set up as a local custom package. I import the package and just start running the methods that I want so that I get the project set up the way that I need it to be for whatever it is that I'm working on. Now, obviously, you can run all three of these methods together as some kind of asynchronous setup operation. I tend to keep mine separate because all of my projects are a little bit different. You know, me building something for VR is not going to be the same setup as I use for a YouTube video, for example. Okay, we haven't demoed anything to make sure it actually works, so why don't we just run through this really quickly. I've started a new project here on the latest Unity tech stream. I do want to point out that the new input system is automatically installed with these newer versions. Now, as I mentioned before, I have this set up as a local package, so I'm going to install package from disk, select my package, and then let that install quickly. Once that's ready, I've got all these new options under tools set up. The create folders is the fastest to run, so let's do that first. You'll see it just takes a second. Now my folder structure is the way I want it. Everything's been moved where it belongs or removed if I don't want it. Okay, let's jump back up to the tools menu and we'll import all the essential packages. I'm gonna speed this one up just a little bit, but you'll be able to see by the seconds count how long it's taking. Okay, so that took 23 seconds to import the 2D animation package and both of the packages from GitHub. Finally, let's import those things that we bought from the store. The two assets from Cyrenex are the heaviest ones of all, and so they're going to be imported here, as well as Editor Console Pro. All those other ones are super lightweight. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, so the last number I saw there was 2 minutes and 34 seconds. It was a little bit longer than that, but you know what? That is really not much. That's super fast to get everything imported all at once with just a couple clicks. So now I can either open up the windows and dock them where I want, or you know what? I could probably just save it as layout and do it automatically. What I'd really like is to hear your suggestions on quality of life improvements to the Unity Editor. If you have tools that you just can't live without, I really would like to hear about it. I'm a little bit of an asset store junkie like many of you. And I guess that's all I've got for you today. Come join us on Discord if you like, or click on one of these boxes on your screen, and I'll see you there.